おはよう皆さんお元気ですか Is that a question? No, 大丈夫か大丈夫大丈夫 No, 大丈夫ですか All right, what is going on, guys? It's your boy, Spanko.、Um, I am here to show you guys another deck profile. And this is something that I cooked up. I don't know if it's something that people have already put together. I don't know if it's something that people have tried. I, I haven't seen it myself personally, so I don't want to say I'm the creator of this, but it is something cool, something fun to play in today's format that's not fire or voices voice. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something that was a little bit more fun, a little bit more unique, and a little bit more entertaining. And, and honestly, it's still pretty competitive. You can still fit a lot of non engine in this, and it. Uses a lot of really strong engines and you can make some pretty powerful boards with it. So, I want to show you guys what it is. And of course, it's, Ho it's、uh, Horus. I wanted to say, of course, it's featuring the Horus cards because Horus has been one of my favorite、uh, like、archetypes to build decks off of right now because it it's just so versatile. It can do so many different things, right? So, I want to show you guys my Horus Adventure deck profile and、uh, what I'm kind of cooking up with it. So, let's get right into it. First things first, we are playing three of the Imseti, of course, and then we're actually playing one of all the other names. So you want to play all of them. It's actually really important to play multiple of these. Obviously, drawing them is actually not a bad thing in this deck because let's say you draw Imseti plus another one and go Imseti, pitch the other one. You can summon in, like, you can summon multiple of them. It gets you to your rank eight plays, gets you to your link plays as well. So I actually really like running the full package in this, especially with this、uh, build. It's、uh, very heavily focused on these cards and recurring these cards every single turn. So it's really important to be playing all the different names. They're also pretty big bodies and it helps you. TK and turns three and、uh, afterwards, of course, as well. So I like playing all of these names. I'm also on three King Sark, of course. Consistency, you want to be seeing this. As soon as you see this, you're really, really in a good spot because you're able to get all your plays going. Now, why is this so good to see? Well, we're also playing the Adventure Package. So this is Adventure Horus, like I said earlier. And、uh, being able to pitch a Water Enchantress off of like your King Sark or off of your m s e t i is absolutely insane because you don't have a normal summon that's really you're using an effect for. And so this is like one of the best cards in the deck that you can pitch. There's some other cards as well that you can pitch that I'll show you in a little bit, but this is like one of the most important ones and it's really nice to be playing three of. It's also technically An extender for you if you need to make link plays, so it's really nice in that sense. We're also playing, of course, the full package so three right, one faithful, and one、uh, Draco back, as well as one Griffin Rider. We're not playing、um, the other guy,、uh, Illegal Knight, I think that's the name. We're not playing Illegal Knight, we want to go first with this deck. I don't think like, Illegal Knight's not a bad card, I just I just don't think we need to be playing it right now. So, this is the full package again. This is kind of one of those、uh, kitchen sink decks, I think they call it, where it's just a bunch of different engines that synergize well together. So, these and these obviously synergize really well. Now, these, if you guys noticed, are level eight bodies. Level eight bodies are really good because. They give you access to level 10 synchros, assuming you have the level 2 tuner. And the really cool thing about these is outside of, I think, this one, the rest of them have 2,000 or more attacks. So as soon as you get one on the board, you're able to summon this guy over here. Three of the Blackwing Sharanga, the Winged Moon. So this card is absolutely insane. So it's a level 2 tuner that summons itself out to, out to your side of the field, which is really powerful because it's,、uh, it's an extender for you. So not only just the、uh, synchro plays, but link plays as well. And it only requires you to have a 2,000 attack or higher monster on your side of the field. Why is that relevant? I'm pretty sure the token here is. 2000 attack, so if you just have a token out, you can summon this. Obviously, if you have any of these out, you can summon this. If you have this guy out, you can summon this. Very easy to summon, and、uh, yeah, so whether you're extending your link plays or whether you're going into the synchro plays, it's really powerful. Now, this in theory could be assault synchron as well because assault synchron kind of does the same thing, but there's a reason we're playing this, and I'm gonna show you guys in the extra deck why we're playing this and why this card is so good.、It、has a really powerful graveyard effect as well, so that's why we're playing three of these, and then of course, we're playing、uh, three Gizmax. So, I was thinking of another、uh, level eight extender that we could be playing. And my options were like either Kaiju's, but I didn't want to go second. Same thing with Alpha. And I was thinking, okay, what's a really powerful card that we can pitch out of our hand and it's an extender for us? And Gizmek was just honestly the best one because it's a level eight body that summons itself onto the side of the field. So if you have like a Horus and let's say you need another level eight body, you can go Gizmek. It's a perfect card that you can pitch off of your m s e t i you can pitch off of your King Sark as well. So it's just one of those really, really good cards and it synergizes so well because it's another level eight body that you can use. With your level 2、uh, tuner to make a level 10 synchro. So that's essentially the whole point of this deck is you're setting up the adventure package plus either a level 10 synchro or multiple of them or multiple rank 8 monsters, right? So that's why we're playing this engine over here. And that's the three engines that we're playing in this main deck. I just think it's very concise and it's very consistent. And that's the most important thing, right? Because you can pitch any of these. So you have cards to pitch with these that are going to do something for you in the graveyard. This having multiple in the graveyard is actually not bad either. And I'll explain that when we get into the extra deck as well. So being able to pitch all these cards is very relevant. Of course, if you open These you can pitch these guys, still really good as well. So that's it for、uh, the different engines that we're playing. And then this is where it gets a little bit competitive, right? So all of this works really well, synergizes really well, right? But we are in a format where we need to be playing hand traps. So we're just playing the best hand traps of the format, and this deck can fit it, which is the best part. So we're playing three Nibiru, three of the Ghost Bell, three Valor, three Imperm. And three talents. And then we're also playing just the one called by the grave. But the reason we're playing these ratios is just because they're the best hand traps in the format. And 
like if you open a nib let's say you're going first and you open the nib and you really need to just discard an extra card this is just a card you can get rid of right and it doesn't really hurt you at all and then bell is really good because the fire matchup i found is like the hardest matchup for this deck so playing bell of course is really important to that same thing with impairment veiler you guys are going to see a lot of the floundries decks as well these cards are really good into that so pretty much this covers everything in the meta you could play another hand trap here instead of the talents but i actually really like talents as you guys saw we don't have a lot of draw power in this deck we do have a lot of consistency with the adventure package with the king sarx with the Imsedi as well Imsedi does get you an extra draw as well but if you guys want to use this for the draw effect if you guys want to use it for the steel effect as well that's really good because you can link climb with it so talents i think is just so good in today's format it's always going to be live and it's one of those cards where you can use it for multi-purpose which is really nice so this could be another hand trap if you guys wanted it to be but you guys can see we're not playing ash blossom so this is where ash would be i just don't want to play into fire i don't want to stop my fire player from playing and then ash him and then he's like wait i actually have a heat align now and a heat align is going to make him the full combo again right so that's why i'm not playing um the ash i'm playing tactics instead and then one call by the grave so this is 40 cards on the dot i didn't want to play more than 40 i think you just need the consistency so 40 cards in the main deck and it's just something that um I wanted to play Desires, actually, now that we're, we're here, I want to tell you guys, I wanted to play Desires, but I just didn't want to banish all of my adventure package stuff. The horse package is kind of small as well, so I didn't want to banish that, or yeah, banish that, I should say. So that's why we're playing the Talents here instead, because if we really do need the draw power, we have that draw power. So let me get into the extra deck now, though. So we're playing uh, the One Ding Gear Suit. There's just the rank eight packages that you guys will see in any rank eight style deck. Thing is really good. This is really good for OTK. We have the whole Harbinger, of course, the Photon Lord. We're always going to be ending on these if we're going first. You want to be ending on these guys. Going second of course if we're able to break a board we can uh, go here and then otk as well so that's the really cool thing about this deck is it's really easy that you can have otk lines but you also have lines where you're going first and you can make crazy boards right uh we're playing the one zeus as well of course when we're playing all these Dixies monsters zeus is really powerful and then again it's just going to be all toolbox links link monsters so one two three over here uh bls is good because they're all uh, level seven or higher so this is really powerful it becomes like a towers for you access code talker is really powerful and the one appaloosa so again just a lot of toolbox stuff you can exchange like like if you don't have access to an SP, you can change it out with another link monster. Same thing with Unicorn. Again, just really, really powerful uh, and generic monsters here. So for the 10 synchros, we're going with Chang Yang. Chang Yang is, of course, really good. Going second to OTK as well. Gives you another OTK option. Baron, of course, is one of the best, if not the best, level 10 synchro of all time. And then lastly, the reason we're playing the Blackwing Tuner is because Blackwing Full Arm uh, Armor Metal Master, whatever it's called. So this card is absolutely insane. It's pretty much a Towers as soon as it hits the field. And a lot of decks aren't able to actually out this card, right? So this is one of those cards that you can sit on and kind of stall but the uh blackwing guy over here actually has a really cool effect so long story short the reason you need to be playing the blackwing guy is because he, he you need him to make this and essentially in the graveyard you can banish him and then you just pretty much target a monster it's a quick effect you banish him you target a monster your opponent controls pop it so if you're ending on this it's not only a towers it's also another form of disruption for you so that's why uh we're playing uh, these guys instead it's just one of those really cool effects and that's why i said it's really good to pitch him as well because if you pitch the second blackwing it's a once per turn but it's like if i have multiple blackwing guys in my graveyard and he's just sticking on the board he can just pop consistently right consistently sorry i should say so that's why it's, it's really powerful in that sense so i mean i guess technically it's not him that's popping it's the blackwing guy the little tuner guy but uh yeah you're gonna popping cards another form of disruption really really powerful so that's it for the extra deck of course and then uh for the side deck Again, always going to be up to personal preference, but this is just something that uh, is really good into everything in today's meta. So three Ash Blossom, again, because I'm not meaning this, it's really good in the side deck against Flawandries, against Kashtira, against any deck that's not fire, essentially, you side this in, right? Because this card is really good. Branded as well, right? Then we're also playing three Evenly Matched. Uh, this card is really good going second in today's format. I really like playing Evenly Matched. Even if you lose your battle phase, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're able to break boards, you guys can use these. And then uh, it's, it, mostly against back row matchups, honestly, you're using this. Front row, you can kind of deal with, but back row, even if you lose your battle phase, if you're able to break the board and uh, make your own board you're pretty much winning the game then we're playing the one harpies as well as three cosmic cyclone now you guys might be wondering i thought you already had back row hate this is kind of like a different kind of back row hate in today's format these cards are just really good into fire as well siding in you're going to side these in a lot of time into fire as well so that's why we're playing cosmic this of course is good into any back row thing right so that's why we have the cosmic the harpies feather duster one change of heart as well as one there can only be one so change of heart of course going second is really good it's just another uh, you know hey i need a link link fodder let's change a heart this card is absolutely insane though so this card going first oh by the way before i go into that uh we're also playing three psalm judgment for going first so four cards for going first and why is this so good this is something that i know it's a one of it kind of sucks now however the actual card itself is still really broken because if you guys didn't notice if you look at all your monsters this is a machine this is a winged beast this here is a spellcaster you have a beast warrior here a beast 
and I guess these are spellcasters as well, but for the most part, if you're gonna have a horse on the board, you'd rather use a horse than this. But essentially, long story short, is uh, this deck doesn't lose to there can only be one. And because it doesn't lose to there can only be one, it's one of those cards that if you side it in and you end up seeing it, it's actually absolutely insane going first. And then Judgment, of course, is always gonna be powerful as well. So that's it for the deck. Um, it's, uh, again, I wanted to show you guys a side deck. Again, it's always gonna be up to personal preference. But this is a deck that I've just been cooking up and I think is really, really powerful and very underrated. If people don't see this coming and they don't know how to side for it, it can be very, very powerful. The, the adventure package, I, I, it's not really great going second however in a build like this one where you can fit so many hand traps and non-engine the adventure package is really really good going first against a lot of these decks putting up omni negates right now is really really powerful and that's what the adventure package does for you that's what the horse package does for you and then that's what all the hand traps do for you and the really cool thing about this deck last thing i want to say is that there's no specific combo lines you guys can be making of course it's all depending on what your hand looks like but that's kind of the best part about this deck because if you see that your hand opening hand is a bunch of hand traps and you're like okay well i have like you know three hand traps let's say in my hand and you don't need to necessarily go for plays where you're setting up omni gates on your board that could be potentially like pop to something else you can make some other like you know more uh, simple plays or more conservative plays and then because the hand traps are going to be able to protect you and then on the follow-up on turn three you guys can go off as well in that sense right so there's just so many different ways to play this deck and it's not just about like how to combo it's more so about like the situation that you're in so again something to test out something that to try i think it's really cool something i've been cooking up something that i think can be pretty fun. So uh, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel. So you guys make sure to subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. I just want to give a big shout out to my boy Alpha in the back, uh, best cameraman on YouTube. He hit me with some facts today, eh? Uh, cameramen are pretty scarce in today's world. So I really appreciate you, man. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. With that, Spanko, sign out. Peace.